It's comeback time on MasterChef. We're looking for a great amateur cook who can make it as a professional. Someone who can turn out exceptional food. I think I could actually win this competition. I've certainly got a damn good shot this year. This is one tough competition. If I don't win it this year, I'm going to come back under a different name next year. Whoever wins, it'll change their life. Cooking doesn't get tougher than this. Last series, these three contestants didn't quite make the grade. Now they're back for one more go at the MasterChef title. I can do it. I can go further in this competition. I was really disappointed to go out in the, in the quarters last time. I think I've got the determination and the skill and the passion. Yeah, hell, I'm determined, definitely. And I'm, yeah, I said, I think I've got a good chance this time. They face two gruelling challenges. They have to impress the judges with their own two-course meal. It's a really lovely, clean, elegant dish. Good on you. But first, it's the endurance test. They have to prove they have the skill and stamina to survive life in a professional kitchen by cooking in service for 18 hours. If you're not answering, you're not hearing. That's why I want an answer. You've learned already that this coagulates. Learn from that. Get it a bit fresh. This is a long, tough day. This is about stamina, endurance and focus. It's just after 5 a.m. and the contestants begin their 18-hour shift. Last time, Turkish-born Fatima won praise for her inventiveness, but was let down by some unusual flavour combinations. I like your style, I like your bravery. Um, that doesn't particularly work for me. Garlic and grape is, is a combination I'm, I'm not used to. I could have done much better than I did last time. I'm much more serious and determined about where I want to go with cooking, and um, so I'm determined to succeed. Nerves got the better of graphic designer Billy last time after his chocolate fondant failed to deliver. It's like eating a bit of undercooked cake. Sure. For me, it's not a true fondant. I'm not bothered about uh, proving something to someone, but just doing as best I can, and, you know, I think I've got as good a chance as anyone. Construction manager Simon made it through to the quarterfinals, but then he slipped up by cramming too many flavours onto the plate. I feel as though the meat is not strong enough to cope with the rest of the flavours. I don't know why you want to put all these flavours together. Going out, you think, well, what have I got to do to get even better, you know? So you just try and perfect and refine, so maybe lose a few ingredients, and, uh, yeah, I definitely think I'm stronger than I was last year. These guys today will have to think on their feet. Two services in a professional kitchen, who has the stamina, who has the skill, and who has got that real want for this competition? For the first part of their endurance test, all three contestants will have to cook breakfast for over 150 guests at Spicer's restaurant at the Crown Plaza in the city, where they'll be cooking under the watchful eye of executive chef Bruce Smith. Hi guys, we're going to be busy. We're going to be doing over 100 covers today. So uh, let's get cracking and have a good service. Breakfast service is about big numbers quickly. People think breakfast is easy, but you get stuck behind that stove and the dockets keep on coming and an egg comes back because it's not cooked properly and the whole thing goes down. Each contestant is in charge of one section. Billy's looking after the poached eggs, including the popular Eggs Benedict. They need to be cooked perfectly and at speed. Right, two poached eggs away. Yes, chef. Yes, chef. They're only cooking. I'll take them back. And he's off to a poor start. Samaj, another eggs Benedictine. Things go from bad to worse. One of these eggs is broken, chef. I'm going to have to put two more on. I'm not nervous, I'm just uh, trying my hardest to get an output. Right, let's go, we're going to build up the checks here. Let's go, I need a faster service. <laughs> faster, yeah? As Billy struggles with the pace, on the other side of the kitchen, Fatima is in charge of the full English breakfast. One fries breakfast, that's full English, yeah? Yes, Sorry, chef. chef. Sorry, I missed that. One fries breakfast, one full yes, English. Yes, chef. Right, Samaj, two fries breakfast. 
she's immediately swamped with orders. I think there's about six or seven things on one plate, and uh, it's just a matter of, you know, managing the cooking time. And under pressure, she becomes flustered. I need two fried eggs. Anyone got an answer today? If you're not answering, you're not hearing. She gets her first plates up to the pass, but in the restaurant there's a problem. What's wrong? The matter is not cooked and stuff is very cold. Okay. Right, let's give me another fried breakfast, yes, yeah? Yes, chef. While Fatima recooks her fry up, Simon is all quiet on the omelette section. Right, so much two ham and cheese omelette, yeah? Chef. On boy when ready. Hey, omelettes. We have omelettes. I think I've got the easy section, you know? Samaj, one tomato, onion, ham and cheese omelette, one mushroom and tomato omelette. Chef. It's like it's omelette time, boys. Who can't cook an omelette, eh? Just roll it over. Take your plate out. He might talk a confident game, but is his like end that. product up to scratch? Just a bit, bit too runny. Yeah. Okay. Just should have been need a bit more cooking, maybe. Yeah. Just watch your shape on that. Yeah. Three hours into service, and with a packed restaurant, the orders are flooding in. One tomato and cheese omelette. One fries breakfast. After a shaky start, Fatima begins to find her feet. Very good. Lovely. However, Billy's still struggling to keep up with the volume of poached eggs. They all need cooking. I'll take them back. Sorry. You messed one egg up and it kind of puts you behind, but uh, I'm trying to catch up now. With the clock ticking, the chef loses his patience. Get the free eggs, Benedictine out. It's been a long time. Michelle, yes, help out a little bit, yeah? Yes, chef. Customers are waiting. Let's go. With service nearing an end, Simon and Fatima are both turning out breakfast to the chef's standards. That's a good omelette. Restaurant? Thank you, chef. I'm always confident. You know, you've got to go over there and have a kick smile on your face, kick your up, and just think that you're going to do a good job. Nice colour on the sausage. Mm -hmm. Eggs are much better now. Yeah, and that's what I like. Well done. I didn't panic. I think that was probably a relief to the chef. Five hours after the morning shift began, service finally draws to a close. OK, that's the urgent service, boys and girls. A couple of complaints. All in all, not bad. Cheers, Chef. Thanks, Chef. Breakfast service. It's a real tough one. Billy, what did he cook this morning and how did he get on? Billy was on the uh, poached egg section. His eggs were probably not cooked enough and then they were overcooked. He was sort of a bit slowish as well. So, really, he needs to pick his game up. How did Fatima get on? She started off bad, a bit of a nightmare, a few dishes went back. But I think she got the coordination and she really done well and proved herself at the end of the day. Tell me about Simon. Simon was uh, mainly on the omelettes. He was nearly there. Obviously, it is a knack and it takes a few, you know, goes at it to get it right. But, you know, he done well. If you're going to invite one of them back into the kitchen, who would it be and why? I reckon Fatima, because she pulled her game round. She didn't crack, you know, and that takes the uh, marking of a good chef. The three contestants are not even halfway through their gruelling day and have to travel across town to cook an evening service at a new restaurant. It's a long service, it's a fast service. Tonight, for me, is where it really, really counts. Will they cope? The adrenaline is going to have to kick in because otherwise they won't make it. Eight hours into their 18-hour day and the contestants arrive at the popular Villandry restaurant in London's West End where they'll be working under head chef Brian Scully. We've got a busy night ahead of us, so the sooner we get in there and get cracking on with it, the better. Good luck. The three contestants have the afternoon to design and prep their own dishes before cooking them for paying customers. This place gets rammed, and they are going to get hit hard. After a quiet breakfast service, Simon is eager to impress Chef with an ambitious dish of lamb cutlets, roasted cherry tomatoes, girol mushrooms and a white onion sauce. Lamb, mashed potato, onion sauce and little baby tomatoes, you're going to get slammed. 
How are you going to cope with that pressure? Um, I'll find out in about half an hour's time. But um, I'm feeling really confident. I've, I've done a lot of prep work, put a lot of hard work in up front. So, uh, yeah, I'm gonna, I'll give it a go. Lovely tender lamb on top mashed potato with a sweet acidity bursting in your mouth from the cherry tomato. That's perfect. Absolutely perfect. It's going to fly out the door. Will he get everyone right? Billy struggled with the poached eggs this morning, but is hoping for better luck with his own creation of chicken stuffed with mozzarella and basil wrapped in ham on a watercress sauce. It is a fairly simple sounding dish. Sure. Do you think it's going to sell really well? I've tried to pick something that's sort of in the style of the restaurant, and you know what? It's not a pretentious, too fussy menu that they've got, so hopefully it'll be a winner. We'll wait and see. After a good breakfast service, Fatima is cooking monkfish and mussels cooked in a saffron and basil fish stock on cannellini beans. Fatima, what's the most difficult part for you to this dish? It was actually preparing the stock and the alioli, so I got most of that out of the way. I made sure that I'm prepped as much as possible. I think it's going to sell really well. Her issue is getting all those ingredients together and then plate it up. John, I think they are going to get hit much harder than they realise tonight, because I think they've got these dishes absolutely right. They sit on this menu perfectly. Twelve hours after their day began, the contestants must now keep focus as evening service kicks off. OK, check on four or slam. You're in the frame, Simon. Unlike breakfast, Simon is immediately hit with orders. Four mains, four lambs, so fish bosh, it's, uh, here we go. He gets his first plates out with the minimum of fuss. Yeah, nice dish. Simon is off to a great start, and Fatima's monkfish is also proving popular. Her dish has a number of separate elements. Timings are crucial. I need to start seeing this now, Fatima. Nice colour. Just need the speed now. I need to get this up, yeah? Are we there? Fatima? Yep, sure. Can I take this? Yes, you can. The hardest part is listening to the order and being able to hear what the chef's instructions are. Hearing orders are not a worry for Billy. He's not getting any. Don't worry, Billy, your time will come. When we're going low on the uh, monkfish and the lamb, we'll start pushing the chicken, yeah? But when they do arrive, he's not paying attention. Three chicken, two cassoulet. Billy! Yes, sir. Three, Three chicken. chicken, yes, sir. Yeah. Billy, get the cream in there, man. Come on, we need to get this up. During the long wait, Billy left the cream out of the fridge, and it's gone off. Cream is coagulating. Somebody get me some cream, please. Let's get this up. Remember when you add cream to that, the temperature's going to go down. Billy, I'm bringing this up onto the pass. I need to see him. A little behind, he gets his first plates to the pass. I'm trying to remember several things at once, but we're learning pretty fast. So I think we've got rid of most of the mistakes so far. I hope for the rest of the night will be okay. Sixteen hours into the endurance test, the restaurant is packed and fatigue is setting in. It's three monkfish in total. No, I was told one and then two. It's two monkfish. Sorry, uh, get a monkfish on straight away, please. Maybe my accent, but you need to listen quite closely yes, to I'm me. Yes, I'm sorry, Chef. Listen out there, yeah? Chef, I'm going to run out of sauce, so... After the sixth one, there'll be no more. I don't think we've got time to make any more sauce. We need to get this sorted out, because we can't afford to run out of monkfish if we've got some in the building. It's a disaster for Fatima. She hasn't made enough sauce, and the orders for her fish are still flooding in. One and a half minutes on these two monkfish, please. Yes, Chef. Chef is left with no option but to summon help. Stay with, stay with Fatima for a few minutes. She's in a bit of trouble here, so you need to pull her out. It's quite a shock to the system when you work in such heat and such pace. While Fatima struggles, Simon continues to ride out the service. We've got eight, eight lamb on, I think. It's popular, it's going out, so I can't grumble. 
Simon. Get in. There is no more alarm after this one. You're out of the frame, yeah? <laughs> no disasters and, uh, yeah, I'm, uh, I'm free, so I'm buzzing, yeah. It's superb. And with service coming to a close, Billy is cooking with confidence for the first time today. A few tense moments, a few odd mess-ups, but overall I'm pretty pleased. Right, guys, that's it. We're done. Exhale. Draw breath. Well done, lads. Well done. Beer o'clock. It's time for head chef Brian to give the judges his verdict. Tell me how Simon got on. He got hit the hardest and got hit quite early. Lamb flew out the window. Fatima, the next busiest, buckled a little bit under pressure and fell into that sin of sins, began to run out of garnish for the extra monkfish that she had halfway through the evening. Billy, on the surface, looks the most nervous person but seems to get it off in the calmest way possible. So tonight, who's the star of your kitchen? I would say Simon. He held his cool, did really well. It's early morning on day two, and the contestants arrive at MasterChef HQ for the final test. I think this is the crunch time now. The best cook is going to come out on the day, and hopefully that would be me. How would anyone feel if they won MasterChef? It would be absolutely fantastic. Hopefully, if it's close to day, I'll be the one that, uh, that gets through. Feeling good, feeling confident. Just really want to get in there and get on with it. I'm going to kick it today. I really am going to do well. Your two courses, one quarter-final place, let's cook. After surviving the gruelling 18-hour double shift in the pro kitchens, the contestants must now impress with their own two-course menu. Fatima had a mixed day in the pro kitchens and must now step up a gear with her own food. Fatima, once again, we have lots of ingredients uh, on your bench from foreign worlds. Just to remind us of your family background, Fatima. I'm Turkish um, and half Kurdish. Grew up in Australia. What are you going to cook for us today? Duck and pomegranate molasses sauce with sour cherry pilaf and a beetroot relish on the side. And dessert is baked peaches in cardamom with a burnt orange syrup and vanilla cream. Do you think you can win today, Fatima? I think I bring a different element. Different element? That's for sure. <laughs> That's for sure. Thank you, Fatima. Thanks, guys. That beetroot relish is pink, and pink food very rarely works. But her dessert, I love the idea of it. Peach flavour is lovely. Does it want citrus lime on it? I'm not convinced, John. You've had 20 minutes. Billy struggled in both restaurants. He can't afford any more mistakes if he's to progress further in the competition. Billy, you're going to cook us two dishes? I am, yeah. Uh, what are they? Thai-style fish cakes with a daikon radish salad and then chicken in a mushroom and Cornish mead sauce. I like the sound of the dishes. Uh -huh. Are you good enough this year, Billy, to go all the way? Yeah, I think I was good enough last year, to be honest, but it, it's all down to what happens on the day. One or two mistakes or one or two things going well, and it's up to you guys at the end of the day, isn't it? His main course, I like the idea of chicken with a mead sauce, I think sounds great. Is it missing one more component part? Ladies and gentlemen, you have but 20 minutes left. 20 minutes left. Simon hopes his own two courses will continue the great success he enjoyed in the evening service. Simon, what are you going to cook for us? I'm doing a starter of scallops on a sweet corn puree with a black pudding and walnut crumble uh, with crispy skin. And the main, hopefully keeping that quite simple this time, fillet of beef with a horseradish mash with some uh, braised baby onions and a hickory and licorice jus. And that's keeping it simple? Yeah. I've only got an hour. <laughs> 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 
He's already proved he can cook. I don't understand what he's trying to prove by putting all those ingredients together. Five minutes, guys. That is it. You've got just one minute to finish off. One minute. That's it. Time's up. Fatima is looking to impress with a main of duck in pomegranate and molasses sauce with sour cherry pilaf and beetroot relish. The earthy, almost sweet beetroot I get, it's this acidity that is the base flavour, and it's the pomegranate. I wouldn't reorder this dish. The good thing about this is that we all have personal tastes. I like the idea of that duck against the sourness of the pomegranate, and I really like that rice. Divided we are. Her dessert is a whole baked peach in cardamom and burnt orange syrup with vanilla cream. I've rarely eaten something so sweet that has such a sharp, clean finish. And I doubted it. That's lovely. I love it. I love that really soft roast peach. I love the cardamom that sits in the back of your throat on that orange. It's really, really great. You are uh, an exciting cook, Fatima. A thought-provoking cook, that's for sure. Thank you. Thanks, Fatima. For his starter, Billy has cooked Thai fish cakes, daikon radish salad and chilli dipping sauce. I really like it because actually you have balanced the flavours really well. Sweet, sour, salty and hot. I think it's a really lovely, clean, elegant dish. Good on you. Thanks very much. Maybe a little too acidic, but uh, I would definitely finish my plate. Can Billy's mane of chicken in mushroom and Cornish mead sauce build on his good start? The first flavour I get is not chicken, actually it's honey. And then mix that with that potato, and it's not just the flavours, but the textures are a bit weird. That potato stack is just a wishy-washy finish. It's a little bit watery, it needs seasoning, or it needs a lot of butter, or it needs something. Do you think that you've done enough to get you into the, the place you want to be? I think I've got a good shot at Yeah, I'm quite happy. For his starter, Simon has made scallops with sweet corn puree, black pudding and walnut crumble, and crispy chicken skin. What I'm left with is a very sort of earthy, almost sort of dried dirt texture of walnut left on my palate, rather than it being lovely and fresh. Uh, I really like it. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> The sweetness of that corn and the saltiness of that crispy skin and that beautiful, rich, sweet scallop, I think is lovely. Simon's main is fillet of beef, horseradish mash and braised baby onions with hickory jus. That sauce is seriously, seriously powerful. It's wiping out so many other flavours. I can't even taste the horseradish in that mashed mm. potato. It's very original. I mean, I do really enjoy your sauce, and, uh, and your beef is cooked beautifully. Everything's cooked beautifully. Interesting food. Do you think you've done enough? Is it yours today? It's too close to cool, I think. I would hope so, yeah. Greg and I are going to have a conversation, because we've only got one quarter-final place. Off you go. Thank you. What's interesting today is there were a few mistakes. There are a few things that weren't quite right, but there was also some very, very good cooking today. Billy worked hard today, Asian fish cakes, nice little dipping sauce and a daikon salad. Really like the flavour of it. I love the look of his uh, fish cakes. 
Um, I almost loved the flavours. I thought it was slightly too acidic. The chicken dish, lovely chicken. The stack was a bit sort of watery and milky against that mushroom and almost honey-rich mead sauce. It started with a big punch, that dish, but it just ended with a whimper. I, I definitely think I've shown enough skill to get through. Uh, it's all down now to whether they think that's more than the other guys did, so at least it's out of my hands. You and I are divided over Fatima, I know that. The idea of that pomegranate and the rice and the, the dried cherries and the duck, I really like that, that sharpness, that savoury sharpness rather than sweetness. I couldn't, could not get my tongue around that almost citrus acidic pomegranate. I just thought, where are we going with this? Where are we going? I don't know where we're going, but could it please stop so I can get off? Her dessert, beautifully well-roasted peach with lime. When you ate it, it was just really exciting. I think Fatima's peach was, was truly lovely. It shows what the lady is capable of, I'll give you that. I've got the drive and the uh, passion for the food I cook. So, yes, I think I can go right to the end. Let's talk about Simon, because Simon did very, very well last night. Simon was definitely the star of the professional kitchen last night. The issue I have today is beautiful scallops, black pudding, chicken skin and cream corn. Love the idea of it. But then it's salty and then it's sweet from the walnuts. I love that scallop dish. And, John, there is no questioning the cookery skill, the imagination and the amount of work that is going into his food. And that's brilliant, as long as it tastes OK. It confused my palate completely. Not quite as much as his main course, beef... Mushroom, blue cheese, onions, and all I got was that hickory sauce and that piece of steak. He is doing adventurous, thought-provoking food, and that is what we want from a finalist. I'm absolutely desperate to go through. That's why I'm here. You know, I was, I was uh, in bits after going out last year, and uh, I really can't face it again this year. Who do we go for? I... Well, you know how I feel. person going through to the next round is Simon. Yeah, a bit gutted, but I did my best. I'll be glad to get home, but it would have been nice to go through. I'll always carry on cooking. It's if you love something, you do all the time anyway, so you yeah, don't need to worry about that one. I'm going back happy. A little bit disappointed, but it was a good adventure. I'm a predetermined girl. I'll, I'll uh, pursue my dreams. Oh, yes, I'm so happy, mate, I'll tell you. It's unbelievable. It means absolutely everything. You know, it is a second chance and it is the last chance, and, uh, yeah, I'm absolutely, absolutely over the moon. I'm, I'm just sort of in a bit, a bit of shock at the moment. I'm, I can't run around naked, but, like, I feel like doing. <laughs> Simon will be back for the quarter-final, where he'll face three other exceptional cooks.